application season for the fall 2025 is just around the corner. So let's talk about how your overall application timeline should look like in order to win your dream admission. So let's get started. Tier 1 universities like Stanford, Harvard, Caltech, Princeton start accepting the applications as early as September or October with the deadlines in the December or maybe early January for the next year. Whereas the universities like, you know, University of North Carolina, of Washington, St. Louis, they start accepting ac applications at almost about the same time, but with the deadlines in the April or maybe, you know, uh, late March. So the application window varies from university to university. Then that's the first thing you need to keep in mind, the application window. When does a university start accepting the applications and when is the deadline? That's the first thing you should keep in mind. I have an important announcement to make. This summer I will be teaching an online course admission 102 for all those students who aspire to study in US or Canada for their masters or PhD programs. In this course I will share all the tips and tricks that you need to win your dream admit. You will learn about how to apply, the eligibility, the tests you need, the documents you need, how to write SOP, how to you know get a good LORs everything that you need to win your dream admission. The course will go live in August 2025. If you are interested, fill up this form. This is the interest form so that you register your interest early on. The early words will get 40% discount. I will leave the link in the description down below. Now let's say if you want to apply to those first year universities, Stanford, Harvard, Caltech, Princeton, that opens up their application portal in September or October, which means then you have to be ready by September or October or max maybe by November. A common mistake that students make, a lot of students make that they race against time. If the deadline is December 30th, they try to complete their application on December 30th or just a few days before December 30th. And that is not a good practice. That is exactly what I want to warn you about. If you want to maximize your chances of admission, you should try to complete your application as soon as universities start accepting the application, as soon as they open their application portal, which means you have to be ready by September or October if you want to apply to those tier one universities, which means you have to be ready with your TOEFL score, with your GRE score, have to have your LORs written, with, you should be ready with your SOP, you need to have your course evaluation if needed, you know, all those things should be ready by September or October. <sighs> A lot of stuff, I know but you have to be ready. So here is the quick timeline for you guys. But before I do that, I want you to smash that like button and subscribe my channel. Thank you. So let's get to the point. The first thing is your GRE, the test of aptitude, and TOEFL, PTE, IELTS, or Duolingo, the test of English proficiency. If you want to target those first year universities I just mentioned, you have to be ready with these scores by September. Earlier the better because these tests remain valid for a few years. So if you can write these tests like one year, one and a half, two years in advance, that's very good because at least then you can take one thing off your plate and then you can focus on the other aspects of the application. Mid-September to early October is your buffer time. In case your GI score is low, your TOEFL is below the threshold, that makes you ineligible to apply to those universities that otherwise you would want to, then you can use this time, rewrite those exams and get the desired score close the threshold so that you can apply to those universities. By the way, if you are targeting those universities that have already waived the GRE, then at least you have one test less to worry about. The next thing is shortlisting universities. Shortlisting is something that you cannot, you know, do in one day or one week or one month. You know, you cannot devote one month just to, you know, shortlist universities. This is something you have to, you have to do in parallel. In parallel when you are preparing for your GRE and your TOEFL exams. Those, in those months. Spare some time from those months, May, June, July and August, these four months and, you know, start shortlisting. Go over all the websites, read about all the universities, read about the program in details that you are interested in and see what courses they are offering and what courses you are interested in and if that matches your interest then shortlist that university. By the way I also have a very detailed video on how to shortlist universities for the grad program. I will leave the link in the description down below. Now the next step is SOP, the statement of purpose. Start writing your SOP at least three to four weeks ahead of starting your application in any university at least three to four weeks. That's how long it takes. A common mistake that students make is they write a generic SP and they send that generic SP to all the universities. And that is a perfect recipe for rejection. Never ever ever write a generic SOP that fits a broader criteria of SOP for all the universities. Tailor your SOP for each and every university, for each and every program. If you are applying 10 universities, 15 universities, 
it means you have to write 15 different SOPs. And I mean it. Take your time, revise your SOP many, many times and send it over to some experienced person, your senior or someone who has gone through the process and ask for his or her feedback on your SOP. Your SOP has to be close to perfect, if not perfect. And make sure you are ready with your SOP before you even start application. I have an amazing video on common mistakes that students make on their applications that leads to you know, rejections. I will leave the link in the description down below. Please do watch that video. I'm sure you will learn a lot from that video. The next important documents are the LORs, the letter of recommendations. Most of the universities ask either two or three letter of recommendations and make sure you ask your recommenders before you put their name in the online application. Talk to them in advance, give them heads up and most importantly, make sure they agree to provide you a letter of recommendation well in advance. Now, if you are wondering what a good LOR should look like, not a problem. I also happen to have this video on my YouTube channel. I will leave the link in the description down below again for your reference. Now let's move on to the other documents. As soon as you start your application, you also have to be ready with the other documents like your transcripts, your course evaluation, your provisional DMC, your provisional degree in case you don't have the original ones ready yet. And all of that you also have to prepare in advance. By the way, not all the students need provisional degrees or provisional DMC. In case you know those students who have already graduated and they have the original ones with them, they don't need the provisional ones. After you complete all the applications on time, the next step is offer letter. If you apply to those tier one universities that I mentioned, you should start you know getting decision starting from January onwards. In some case, for some universities and mostly for PhD students, there could be an interview round that will happen in the month of January or maybe max in the February. But anyway, you can expect your offer letter anytime between January through all the way May 2025. And if you are not offered any scholarship or a assistantship by the university, then the university will ask you to provide financial documents to prove that you have enough funds, enough money in your bank to support your education, one year of education in the US in order to issue your I-20. They will not issue your I-20 unless you show them the proof of funds. And I-20 is a document that you need to apply for the US student visa. It's very important. Otherwise, if you don't have the I-20 with you, you cannot get the student visa. So make sure you make your financial planning well in advance also, which includes your bank loan, your personal loan, or you know, if you want to deposit money in your bank account, you know, you can do that. Do it well in advance, like five, six months in advance so that you can generate bank statements from last six months. So just be ready. Again, Unless you show proof of funds, university will never issue you I-20. And that's a problem. So just be ready with your financial documents well in advance. Now, on the other hand, if you have some kind of scholarship or full financial support from the university or from any outside source, then you don't need to show any financial documents. That scholarship documents or financial assistance documents will be sufficient. Lastly, you have to cover your risk also. For any reason, if you don't receive any offer letter till mid-March or maybe end of the March, then start applying to more universities. There are many universities that keep accepting applications until mid or maybe end of April. They have the deadlines very, very late. Apply to those late deadline universities, some of those late deadline universities, just to cover your risk. Losing one year is much worse than, you know, losing some extra few hundred bucks on extra applications. Believe me, apply to those extra late universities, cover your risk. And if you receive multiple offers, then do watch this video where I have talked about how to pick the best offer out of many offers that you receive. I will leave again the link in the description down below. And lastly, the onboarding. That includes applying visa, doing shopping, that's a big one, and uh, leasing an apartment, that's also a big thing. That typically starts, you know, from March onwards, as soon as you apply, as soon as you accept the offer. Well, that's all for today. I hope you find value in this video. If you did, please consider subscribing my channel. I will see you next week in another video. Till then, take care. Bye.